American consumers who are struggling financially are having an impact on businesses. Today, I read an article on FoxBusiness.com written by Eric Ravel, titled, Consumers See Inflation Easing, Anxious About Job Market Personal Debt, New York Fed Survey. The author of this article referenced a new report released Monday by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which found that U.S. consumers see inflation easing, but they are worried about the labor market and managing household debt loads. I'm going to share my thoughts. I'm not surprised to be hearing about people who are worried about the labor market. With all of the layoffs that we have seen in the news this past year, I am sure this makes people nervous about their own jobs. Some industries have slowed down tremendously. Higher interest rates have really put a damper on some businesses. Higher interest rates have also impacted consumer spending. Some people who rely on credit to live are now running into problems because it is getting more difficult to deal with their debt. This leads me to my next comments about people who are worried about managing household debt loads. Some Americans bought too many things in recent years, and now they are having a hard time paying for them. During the multiple offer mania, some people went out and paid over asking price for a home and waived inspections. Some of these people right now may be in a situation where they have to figure out how to maintain that home that they barely qualified to buy. A home can be very expensive to maintain, especially if you have to finance repairs. Contractors tell me a lot of customers need to finance their plumbing, electrical, or HVAC repairs. They simply don't have the cash to pay for the repairs. Apparently, some people don't qualify to finance the repairs. Their applications are rejected. If you don't know how to fix problems with your house and you can't qualify for financing to get the repairs made, what do you do? This is a situation that some people are in right now. To make matters worse for some homeowners, they also have seen their property taxes and insurance increase. Insurance has gotten crazy expensive in the past year or two, and the coverage isn't as great as it once was. Talk to some insurance agents and they will tell you about clients who are grandfathered into amazing policies that they never intend on giving up. New clients aren't able to get the same stellar coverage. It's not just everyday Americans who are struggling financially though. This next story is about a retailer. I read this on CNBC.com, written by Gabrielle Von Rouge, titled, Big Lots Files for Bankruptcy Protection, sells to private equity firm as it promises to keep offering extreme bargains. According to the author, Big Lots filed for bankruptcy protection, citing stubborn inflation, high interest rates, and a slowdown in consumer spending on home goods such as furniture and decor. Well, my friends, I hate to hear about this. I guess this is just a sign of the times here in America. When consumers have less money to spend into the economy, it impacts retailers. The author mentioned home goods such as furniture and decor. When people are struggling to pay for their rent, pay for food, pay for daycare, pay for insurance, they simply don't have the money for fun things like furniture and decor. While some people probably enjoy watching these remodel shows on television and dream of redecorating their living room or kitchen or bathroom, they simply can't afford to do so. With that said, I'm sure there are people who are willing to take advantage of zero payments and zero interest for 12 months that some furniture stores offer. In my opinion, that is very risky. If you can't afford this stuff right now, how are you going to afford it 12 months from now? People are often just kicking the can down the road. If I didn't have the money to buy furniture or decor right now, I wouldn't be financing items that were new. I'd be finding some good deals on used items at an auction, or I would talk to some local real estate agents. Some real estate agents try to help their clients who are moving to get rid of items. These people don't want to pay to move these items, and they are often willing to just give these items away. It's like people just donating items to Goodwill. But some people don't have a truck to take items to Goodwill. They will just have their real estate agent see if he or she knows anyone who wants the items for no cost. Even if the furniture is slightly worn, 
I'd much rather do that than go into debt to buy new items. Plus, a lot of new items aren't all that great in terms of quality. But that's just what I would do. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another interesting article today. This was on ZeroHedge.com, written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers at Zero Hedge, titled, Does Anyone Else Smell a Market Crash in the Air? According to the author, just as thunderstorms sent the air before their arrival, market crashes often announce themselves in the autumn zephyrs. Markets don't crash when everyone's in full-blown panic. They crash when the headlines and data are reassuring. Analysts are confident in ever higher profits and complacency reigns supreme, evidenced by record high household allocation in stock and bullish sentiment readings. Here are my thoughts. I think the author has an interesting take on this. In a way, this rhymes with some historical market crashes. Prior to the stock market crash in 1929, people had a lot of optimism about new technologies such as radio. RCA was a high-flying stock back then. Even common people with no experience in the market were drawn into the mania to get rich. I once watched a documentary about the Great Depression. One person said he knew something was going to happen when the shoeshine boy was giving stock tips. In the lead-up to the dot-com crash, a lot of people who had never been interested in stocks got wrapped up in the mania in the late 1990s. Back then, Everyone was hyped up about NASDAQ stocks. It didn't matter if you were at the auto shop or the grocery store. People were talking about high-flying dot-com stocks and how much money people were making. It wasn't as bad in the lead-up to the 2008 market crash, but there was certainly a lot of exuberance in the air back then as well. We've seen the air come out of some high-flying stocks this year, but really, that is a drop in the bucket compared to what we could witness if there is ever a full-blown market crash. People have short memories regarding prior market catastrophes. The author of this article went on to say, markets crash after a brief bit of panic selling is immediately bought and markets are returned to a permanently high plateau of valuation. Well, my friends, this happened back in 1929 as well. There were some big players who bought an initial dip and that instilled confidence in people and the market went back up. But this was short-lived. Eventually, all of the air came out of the bubble and the aftermath was tragic. I'll share with you one more quote from the author of this article. He said, markets crash when the rot beneath the surface is visible and goes unnoticed. Well, my friends, the word rot is open to interpretation. But if you have watched some of my prior videos, I've talked a lot about what is happening in the real economy in America. Some could construe that as rot. In the media, there is often a lot of hype, a lot of smoke and mirrors, and little discussion about how everyday Americans are struggling financially. At some point, this could come back to bite us. Understand, I'm not predicting a market crash. There are plenty of people who will tell you it's not possible now because we have circuit breakers in place and because we have a Fed who always comes to the rescue. That's certainly a possibility. But what happens if even the Fed loses control? I don't think some people think about that. I'm not saying it will ever happen. I'm just saying anything is possible. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.